The Booker Creek watershed is an essential part of the Chapel Hill community and ecosystem. Unfortunately, recent urban development and extreme weather events resulted in more frequent and extreme flooding events in the area. In an attempt to solve this issue, the town of Chapel Hill proposed constructing six large stormwater retention basins. Unfortunately though, this seemingly positive solution would result in the destruction of the Booker Creek natural landscapes that are so important to the surrounding community. So all of this came about because the town was increasingly concerned about flooding. And that's because over time, uh, we've got global warming and more frequent storms, but also um, the town is growing and urbanizing and more and more impervious surfaces are covering what formerly was forest. So the long story short is they hired a consultant called W.K. Dixon, a consultant to go out and study all these subwatersheds and come up with the characteristics of them and what would be recommendations to to not only to control the flooding, but also to to get our creeks in, uh, in better health. So the Eastwood Lake subwatershed is, is the one where recommendation came in to make some stormwater basins that would actually remove a lot of forests. So the, the re- approach was, well, we need to slow the water and give it a chance to sink in before it flows on downhill and 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 uh, floods Eastgate, et cetera. So this is the before picture showing, this is Eastgate in the foreground. This is the forest that was here. These are the new apartments that um, Chapel Hill has been busy approving and developing. And then over here is the result. And so what Dixon recommended was seven of these stormwater storage basins storage projects. And the, one of them has been built. That's the one we just looked at that's downstream from Eastgate. And it was primarily to benefit Eastgate Shopping Center. And then uh, the idea is that would slow down the, uh, it would give the water a place to hang out for a while before it went downstream and, and hopefully reduce flood levels downstream. Okay. The burden of protecting their natural landscapes fell on the community members of the Booker Creek watershed. Many would feel the effects of a stormwater basin plan in their own backyards. In an effort to change town council's minds, community members banded together to protest the current proposal. We found out about this by the by. We just happened to have, a, there was an email thread uh, that somebody forwarded to us in our neighborhood, uh, indicating that it's on July 10th of this year, uh, a project that had been underway for five years, and we just happened to find out about it. We were appalled at what was at what we were hearing, and we knew nothing about what was really going on. Um, and so, within short order, we through our neighborhood newsletter we organized an educational meeting for that Sunday evening a couple of days later. And a couple of people you know, made presentations to us around you know, helping us educate ourselves about what the reality of this was. And when we did the analysis, um, we, we had a panel of experts. And what we found was that the net benefit of spending $20 million dollars to destroy 46 acres of trees to the town ended up being less than a foot of water. Some, some of the biggest critiques of the Dixon study was that it gave zero weight to environmental costs, you know, environmental damage. We organized and we had a team of about 12 people uh, who worked together for basically two months. We had no idea how long it was going to take, Um, but it ended up being two months. And um, we had uh, one of our um, our, our members had a daughter who was home from college and began a petition called Save Booker Creek. 
And we had over about 840 people sign that petition from all over town. Uh, none of the council members nor the mayor had ever even set foot on any of these sites. And they still voted to destroy them. So uh, my mission was to take them out there and look at the trees, look at the ecosystem, look at the creek and talk to them about how they're all interrelated and, and how this forest, which by the way, was a mature, all these forests are 80, 100 year old forests uh, growing on the bottomlands near creeks. Uh, these forests are already very effectively managing stormwater and mitigating flooding. And to take not only the trees, but they were planning to take four to 10 feet of the soil as well to create the basins. They're taking the entire forest and stream ecosystem. So once they got a little better acquainted and understood what was out there, they, they basically told us that it was a mistake to do this project. Another community organizing component of this, I think, is uh, it was the coordinating team of 12 people uh, representing three different neighborhoods, actually five different neighborhoods, who met uh, every week, every Sunday evening, 8 o'clock, um, to take stock, to listen to each other, to um, coordinate our efforts, uh, to identify new issues. It was that was kind of the glue that held us through this entire time. So it helped that there was an election approach in Chapel Hill. <laughs> and so the mayor, Pam Heminger, you know, people were just these people around Piney Mountain Road just went crazy with opposition. And, uh, you know, they were writing letters to the council, putting up signs, petitions, et cetera. And so um, Pam, who's a very skillful politician, said, whoa, this is not going to look good for me at election time. Who knows what she really thought, but she had sufficient motives just from political considerations. So she engineered a decision by the town council, and this shows her skill. They basically disapproved the six unbuilt projects. You know, they took away their approval. With the stormwater basin plan halted, the flooding issue still remained. The Chapel Hill Town Council created the Booker Creek Working Group to find an alternative, more environmentally conscious solution. Composed of scientists, neighbors, and other relevant experts, the working group will research and discuss to create a novel proposal for Chapel Hill. Oftentimes, I, th I think when we start talking about flooding, it's a, it's a public policy and a planning process without a public. Because usually flooding is, oh, it's going to happen in 20 years and people don't pay attention to it. And the, and the towns go ahead and do what they do, propose plans, make investments. But then if the public hears about it and it affects them in any way, then they come out of the woodwork. <clears throat> so anyway, that was the urgent thing. The mayor really felt this intense public opposition to these projects. And she wanted <clears throat> to turn down the heat. And she did that very successfully by leading this effort to deauthorize them. I think the uh, pressure against the six projects it was amazingly successful and amazingly strong. And it owed a lot to the fact that people didn't even know these things were being planned. And when they found out, they were really upset. It was very impressive what community members can mm -hmm. accomplish. And I think it really... I think in some ways it kind of validated the feeling that, oh, well, you know, if you really get busy and organize, you can make a difference. I think it, it helped a lot of people feel that things happen in town government. And there's nothing they can do. Well, this was this is a very validating, good experience. So what to do next? And so the town now is taking a year and restudying the issue and trying to figure out a more balanced approach uh, rather than just engineered cut the trees down, dig the ditch. Right now, our strategy is to define our goals, which are to really find workable green infrastructure solutions to the stormwater basin project, but who also uh, suggest that we want this to be more of a town or even countywide effort to become more green and, and look at uh, green infrastructure 
um, projects and solutions that we know and have documented have been successful in other towns. For the entire community, I think government should play a bigger role. Yes, the government has to play a bigger role for those environmental issues because it's not you know, a personal issue, it's a community. We have a, a, a very clear feeling that there is going to be a lot of opposition to green infrastructure. There, there are council members and, and members of the working group that are very clearly set on their own goals. And it's gonna take uh, them convincing themselves that there is alternative, there are alternatives. We're, we're gonna have our first substantial meeting on December the 6th. And I've invited some people from Charlotte and Mecklenburg County who have some very innovative stormwater management programs. And two, two of those people are gonna explain two very different programs and how they do things there. So the idea is we'll get some new ideas. And I'm hoping that the members of this uh, working group, it's kind of a diverse group of people. I'm hoping that people will get engaged with these ideas and you know, get engaged with each other and begin to think about what kind of recommendations we want to make. Chapel Hill really is missing a, an opportunity, I think. They should be a leader in this. Uh, right now, they're the, they're the follower. They're, they're way behind all the towns around us. Despite the obstacles ahead, the journey of the Preservation Alliance is a testament to the efficacy of grassroots organizing. Community members hope that members of the working group will reconcile their differing opinions and unite under a common goal of preserving the lifeline of Chapel Hill and promoting a greener future for all neighborhoods.